Hi guys, welcome back to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. My name is Sean and welcome to part three of the cross stitch in school. In part two, we learned how to cross stitch and we started our bookmark in the top section. And today we are gonna be focusing on the lettering and we're gonna be looking at ways to move around our design and we're gonna be looking at some cross stitching frames which will help you with your cross stitching. The cross stitching school has been broken down into four parts and we would love for you to click on that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you get notified of when we next upload. If this is your first time to the cross stitching school then we would encourage you to go back and watch the previous parts so that you don't miss out on any key information to help you along on your cross stitching journey. To obtain a copy of the free design that Sally has made specifically for this cross stitching school all you need to do is subscribe to the VIP Stitch Club, link down below in the description box and you will gain instant access. There is also a supply pack which contains all of the cross stitching supplies that you need to stitch this bookworm. You can purchase them over at the Caterpillar Cross Stitch website which we will link down below. Now the design does not contain any backstitch so we will not be covering backstitch in the cross stitching school. However, there is an excellent ultimate beginner's guide video here available on Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube, which you can go and check out. So with that said, let's get into part three. Before we jump into our stitching, I just wanted to share with you two frames that can help you with your stitching. Now here on the left, we have a hoop and here on the right, we have a Q-snap. Now these come in various sizes and there are other frames available for you to choose from but today we're going to be taking a look at the hoop and the q-snap so i'm going to break these down and show you how they work starting with the hoop this is a seven inch hoop and it comes in two parts we have an inner circle which is smaller than the outer circle and we have this screw here on the top which helps to tighten the hoop so to assemble this, all you have to do is put the smaller hoop underneath the fabric and place your fabric on top. And then taking the larger circle, we place that on top of our fabric and we push it into the smaller circle on the bottom. Now we want there to be a little bit of tension when we try and get it on. So this hoop is just a little bit too loose. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to tighten it a little bit and then I'm going to then place it back on top of the fabric and that then creates a nice taut fabric which will really help with our stitching. So I like to turn it over and just pull out the fabric just to flatten it a little bit. And this really does help to create that nice taut fabric and then I'm now going to tighten the screw until I get a little bit of resistance on the screw and there we have our fabric in our hoop. Now this hoop is great for those smaller designs that you're stitching and you can get bigger sizes to fit the design you're stitching. This is a nice light hoop and that's one of the things I do like about hoops is that it is light in the hand. Another great thing about hoops is you can fully finish your cross stitching and display them in the hoop. And so these look great and they are super simple and it is a really great option to fully finish your cross stitching. Next up, we have the Q-snap. Again, these come in various sizes. So I'm just gonna take these clasps off each side. Now you can either pull them off like I am showing you, or you can actually pull them down the side of the Q-snap. It does make it come apart sometimes, as you can see but it is a nice, easy way to take it off as well if you struggle to pull it off the, the frame. So I'm just gonna move these to a side and the frame goes underneath your fabric and then taking each of the clasps, I'm going to clasp the fabric onto the frame. So I'm gonna do this on each of the sides and then I'm going to just push the clasp outwards as that creates more tension in the fabric and as you can hear that has really created a nice 
taut fabric which is going to really help us to keep those stitches neat and to keep our stitches all looking the same size. So there we have our two frames. Now it really does come down to personal preference which one you prefer to use. I prefer to use a Q-snap as it really does work well with my stand. But if I was stitching in hand or hold or wanting to hold my, my stitching, I think I would prefer a hoop. But I would say give both a go so then you know which one you prefer to use. And leave us a comment down below if you do try one of these frames and let us know what your experience is. Today we are going to be focusing on the letters in our bookworm. In part two we focused on the top line and we focused on the English method and the Danish method and we really just focused on how to stitch but today we are going to be moving to the next section which is going to be this letter B and as you can see here I've gone ahead and I've completed the three rows and today I've put it in a little hoop so if you are struggling to stitch on the um, fabric then you can put the, fa uh, the fabric in a little hoop like this and it just gives a bit of uh, tautness to the fabric. I'm also going to take a little cable magnetic holder and these are really great to keep that fabric out of your way. So I'm just going to roll the fabric up and then I'm going to place one magnet on either side of the fabric. These are great as they really do keep your fabric out of the way. So if you do have quite a lot of excess fabric, then these are a great little tool to have just to keep your fabric out of your way, making it easy for you to stitch around it. In part two, we looked at two methods you can use to start your stitching. We looked at the loop method and we looked at the knot method. Today, we're gonna to be looking at another method called the tail method. We're going to be starting in the top section here. So we're going to be stitching next to our plum stitches here on the top line. There are two empty squares and then there are four plum stitches. So we need to count two empty squares and then we need to stitch four plum stitches. So taking our needle, we're now going to learn how to do the tail method. So I'm going to count two empty squares, one, two, and I'm going to place my needle in the square where we need to add our stitch. I'm going to pull my thread through and I'm just going to leave a couple of centimetres of, of thread in the back, as you can see, and I'm going to place my finger on the thread. Then I'm going to push my needle back down in the in the bottom right of the square and I'm going to pull my thread through until I feel resistance on the thread. Now we don't want to pull too hard, we just need to pull until we feel that resistance on the thread. Then I'm going to turn my bookmark around and we still have this tail here waiting for us to do something with. And what we're going to do is we're going to push our tail underneath our thread here. So I'm going to take the tail and I'm going to push, push the tail underneath the thread that we've just pulled through. Like so. Then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to push the needle in the hole just below where the thread has just come through. So as you can see, there is a hole here just below where my thread has just come through. But what we need to make sure is that the tail runs in between the th where the thread has just, been, has just come through the fabric and where the needle is being pushed down. Then going to pull that thread through And we just need to make sure that we catch the tail. So as you can see, we've now caught that tail as we've pushed our needle down. Then I'm going to flip our bookmark back over and I'm going to repeat it again. So I'm going to 
go back down in the bottom right of the square and I'm going to pull the thread through, spin my bookmark around and we just need to make sure that our thread goes over the top of our tail. I'm going to take my needle and again I'm going to find the hole just below where the thread has come through which you can see is there and I'm going to pull the thread through and we just need to make sure that that thread sits on top of the tail. And we're going to do that four times because that is what the design needs. And there we have a nice secure tail. So I'm now gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut off the excess thread that we don't need. And there you have a secured thread in place. So that is the tail method. Now going to add the top stitch to our four half stitches. And then we have our first line of our letter complete. Moving on to the next line, we have six stitches in total to complete. And you can see there is one extra stitch on either side underneath our four stitches. So you can see that there is one left to this, of this square and one right to this square here. So we finished in this corner here. So we're going to count one down and then one, one to the side and that's where we're going to be starting. So if we take our bookmark, we're going to count one down and one to the side. So this is where we are going to be putting that first stitch for that second line. Now I am starting in this top left hole of the square but you can start in any of the squares. So if you can have a look at the instructions, you can see in this, in this example here, Sally has demonstrated that she would start in the bottom left of the square and then push the needle back down in the top right of the square. So it really does not matter which way you do it. It really does come down to personal preference. All you need to do is make sure that your bottom leg stitch runs the same way and your top stitch runs the same way. So we're going to do the English method for this example, just so we're reminded of the two different methods available for us to use. And it really does come down to what you prefer to, to use. I think they both work well for different types of stitching. I think the Danish method really does work well for those stitches where you have lots of stitches to complete with the same color. And the English method does work well when you are moving around a lot and changing colors quite a lot in the design. So we have six stitches to complete. And I'm just gonna do the railroad method, which we covered in part two where you need to separate the threads before you come back down into the hole making your threads run nice and neat along each other making your stitches look nice and neat as well. So there we have our two lines. So I'm going to now take my pencil and I'm just going to mark off where we have stitched as this really does help when stitching, especially if you are moving around a lot in the design, as you can see, we are gonna be doing that in the letter. So it is a good idea to mark off where you have completed. So we now come to the next line and you can see that there is a gap in the next line. And so we need to make sure that where there is gaps in our design, we don't cross in the back of our fabric with our thread as it can cause shadows in the fabric. 
If we take a look at the example, you can see there are gaps in the design where the fabric is showing. And there are lots of little holes in between these gaps. And so what can happen is if we cross off our thread as we work along the lines, you will be able to see the shadows of where the thread is being moved across in the back. So we need to make sure that we avoid this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to work down this way. We don't have any threads moving along in the back. So I have finished in this, in this square here, which in the design is here. So I'm gonna work down this direction as my thread has finished on this side. So I'm going to do three stitches in total for this line. If we look at the design, you can see that we have two stitches just beneath these two stitches and then an extra stitch to the right. So I'm gonna stitch from this second square here, which is this square here. And I'm going to stitch three stitches to achieve that section. And there we have our third line on the right complete. So moving along, we then have two stitches below it, but we miss out a stitch. So underneath our third stitch, we have one missing stitch and then we have our two stitches. And then we're going to repeat that again exactly underneath our two stitches. There are a further two stitches underneath. Then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to mark off where we have stitched. Now you can also use this area if you wanted. As you can see, I have marked off here where I completed the lines. But for this example, I'm going to be marking off the coloured version. So moving on to the next section, we have three stitches in total to complete. And we have this additional stitch underneath our two stitches. And we've got that two times to complete. So taking our bookmark, we now need to add three stitches under our two stitches that we've just completed. So we've now achieved our three stitches and you can see that it repeats again. However, this time the three stitches move one stitch to the left. So we need to go one stitch down and leave that square empty and stitch our three stitches to the left of the empty square. Okay, so I'm going to take my pencil and mark off that we have now achieved them three stitches. 
So again, we're going to repeat the same thing. So we're going to go down again and the stitches are going to move once to the left and we've got one line of three stitches to achieve. So we're going to go one down and move it to the left and we've got three stitches to complete. Take a pencil and mark that we have completed that. Okay, so the next line again, we're going to move shift to the left one stitch, but this time we have four stitches to complete. Moving on to the next section, we have seven stitches in total with one missing stitch under our set of four stitches. So we have four stitches here, so we're going to miss this one stitch and then we're going to add seven stitches in total. So I'm going to end my thread as I'm now short on my thread. So I'm going to run my needle underneath the stitches and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut the thread and I'm going to get a new piece of thread and start again. So I've now completed a thread and so I am now able to move back up to the top here and I'm going to work my way down and I'm then going to complete this bottom section here. So back up to the top, we have one stitch again to the left and we have four stitches in total. So we're going to count one stitch to the left and you can see that there is one empty square in between this blue section and the four stitches we're going to be completing. So you can either count from the blue section or from where you've already stitched. So I'm going to leave one empty square and this time I'm going to use the loop method which we covered in part two and I'm going to complete four stitches. So the next line we have three squares, so three stitches, but then we miss one stitch. So under our four stitches that we've just completed, we're going to stitch three stitches, but then we're going to miss one stitch. I'm going to take our pencil and just mark off where we have achieved and move on to the next section. So we're now moving to the left and we've got three stitches and we've got another set 
of three stitches just directly under that. So where we've just stitched our three, we now need to move our stitches to the left and stitch three stitches in total. And we're gonna repeat that twice. So we mentioned earlier before about not crossing in this area where there are no stitches. And I just wanted to show you an example as to what that might look like if we did. So if we turn our bookmark around, you can see that we would have lots of these lines going across if we were to continue stitching on each of the lines. But you can see that there is a shadow formed underneath where the thread has been carried across and that's due to the fabric being light and also there are lots of little holes where the squares are for our stitching and so that is what we are trying to avoid by working around the empty areas to make sure that we don't have these shadows forming and the thread being visible from the front. So we've now achieved these two lines. And so we're now moving on to the next section. So again, we're shifting ourselves one stitch to the left and we've got a set of three by three stitches. So we've got one line of three, two line of three and three line of three. So we're gonna move one to the left and then we're gonna stitch three rows of three stitches. Now mark off those three stitches, or three by three stitches. So then we're gonna go down to these two stitches and we're gonna miss one stitch. On the next line we have two stitches again directly underneath but we have an additional stitch we have three stitches in total and we should now meet up to where we left off Okay, so I'm now going to mark off all of those stitches we've just achieved and we didn't mark off this line here so we've now completed this top section of our B. So we're now going to move on to the next line and so we've got quite a lot of stitches to complete here so we've got 10 stitches in total and we have just finished in this section here. So we've just finished in this square here. So I'm going to move towards this way to determine where to start. So if we take a look at the pattern, we have these 10 stitches, but underneath here we have one missing stitch and then we have our 10 stitches. So I'm gonna move my thread from here and I'm going to move down 
to the right of this square here. So taking my needle, I'm going to go and miss this square underneath. And so here next to the missing square is where we are going to start. Moving on to the next line, we have two empty squares underneath where we've just stitched. And then we have the rest of the stitches. So we've got eight stitches to achieve in this next line. So we're gonna skip two squares and then we're gonna stitch eight. Moving on to the next line, we're going to go down one and miss this square and then we're going to stitch three. So we're going to skip one square and stitch three to the left of it. So we're now moving into this section of the B. And again, we just need to use the same theory that we have used in this section, where we need to make sure that we don't move across in the lines. So I'm gonna work my way down this way, and then I'm gonna work my way up this way to complete the B, making sure that I keep the sections separate and this area, which has no stitches, completely free of stitches. I'll then come back and show you the finished B. So I just want to share with you a tip. So I am currently in this section here, so I've completed this section here. So I now need to move up into this area here. So I have finished my thread in this bottom left corner here, and I need to move across to this section here. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to just move across with my thread, as this is then going to move into this area which is a clear space. So this could potentially cause a shadow with the thread. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run my thread along the back of some of the stitches in the back. So I'm gonna run just a few until I get to the area I need to get to. 
So I need to stitch in this section here. So I have ran my thread along the back until I get into that area. So then I'm going to push my needle through the back. So here is where my thread is now. So I've just put my half stitch in. And so if we take a look at the back, you can see that we have moved our thread through the back and we've now come up here. If we didn't do that and we moved our thread from where we were last with our stitch, it would have moved across into this area which is free of stitches and could have caused a shadow. So a good tip to remember is that you can move your thread along the back of your existing stitches to keep areas that are on display with no, so to keep areas with fabric on display, should I say, nice and clear. So there we have our finished letter. I absolutely love the lettering that Sally has used. It has a really nice flow to the lettering and I can't wait to add the rest of the letters. So we have now completed the top line and our letter. So we now have the rest of the word to complete and we have the additional lines here on the bottom. So the next time you see this, I will have all of the wording and the lines underneath ready to fully finish our bookworm into a bookmark. So that concludes part three of the Cross Stitches School. If you have been stitching along with me, then please do share your progress either on our Facebook group or on Instagram. We will leave the hashtag here on the screen for you to use. Now I am gonna be completing the bookworm ahead of time ready for part four where we will be finishing our bookmarks however please don't feel any pressure to complete your bookmark before that part four is released as the videos will be available for you whenever you are ready to finish your bookmark so take the time take all the time you need and if you do have any questions then make sure to leave them down in the comment section below thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in two weeks